Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghuvir. In this class, we will discuss about the equivalence of two propositions without constructing a truth table. In our last classes, we discussed using construct construction of truth tables and in our last classes, we already discussed the equivalence formulas. Please watch the classes and come back here. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. Coming to today's class, as this is our first example on equivalence showing that without constructing the truth tables, we will go very slow and we will give different ideas how to think about this and how to solve these equations. So, coming to this, they have given two propositions. This is one proposition and this is second proposition. So, we need to show that these two propositions are equal without constructing the truth table. We can use the equivalence formulas which we discussed in our previous classes. We have to take LHS and we have to derive it as RHS. Otherwise, you have to take RHS and show it as LHS. Now, coming to the uh, first example, this is the LHS it has given P implies Q implies R. This is equal to P conjunction Q implies R. See, when, 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 uh, whenever you look at this, P implies Q implies R. We need this equation in the form of P conjunction Q implies R. So, we need to convert implies into conjunction. Remember the formulas which we discussed previously. P implies Q can be written as negation P disjunction Q. So, P implies Q can be written as negation P disjunction Q. So, whenever you convert this implies to disjunction, by using De Morgan's law, we can convert disjunction to conjunction. That is what De Morgan's law says. So, there is a possibility. We don't know whether this work, whether by converting this Q implies R into negation Q or R. We have to check different possibilities. With practice, you are going to understand how to solve these equations quickly. So, first we are going to convert this Q implies R into in this equation. P implies Q can be converted into negation P disjunction Q. Similarly, Q implies R can be converted into negation Q disjunction R. So, the first e this equation after converting this in this we got this. Now, assume that P implies Q this entire proposition we call it as Q say it as P as X. This entire proposition you call it as Y. X implies Y. You can convert that into negation X disjunction Y. The same equation, same equation. So, again x means negation x means x means p negation p disjunction y means this entire proposition negation q disjunction r. See, whenever, whenever by looking at this, by looking at this, you need to get the idea both disjunction, disjunction, same symbols, you can apply associative law, you can place these brackets in anywhere. You are going to get the entire equation same if you place these brackets with uh, these two variables or you can place this variable uh, uh, here you are going to get the same output uh, that is what associative law says uh, when when you are going to apply associative law when you are having same symbols so after applying associative law we are keeping brackets to negation p disjunction negation q disjunction r so, why we are placing this to negation P disjunction negation Q? In the output, it shows that P conjunction Q. Here, negation P disjunction negation Q. By De Morgan's law, take out the negation. De Morgan's law, what's De Morgan's law says? Negation of P disjunction Q can be written as disjunction can be converted into conjunction. Negation P conjunction negation Q. Negation of P conjunction Q can be converted as a negation P disjunction negation Q. So, our equation is in this form. Take out the negation outside. You are going to get this one. Negation P disjunction negation Q. Take the negation out. Negation of P conjunction Q. 
disjunction R. See, this is what we got. Now again, again, apply De Morgan's law. Negation, you consider this P conjunction Q is considered as X. Negation X, disjunction R is considered as Y. Negation X, disjunction Y can be written as x implies y that is what our first equation says p implies q can be written as negation p or q negation p or q can be written as p implies q negation x disjunction q can be written as x implies q x implies y so negation x disjunction y can be written as x implies y what is x here P conjunction Q, P conjunction Q implies R. So our final output is this is what we needed. P implies Q conjunction, uh, P conjunction Q implies R. So this is how we need to identify. We have to use different formula sequence formulas which we discussed in our previous classes. So we have to check the different possibilities. Sometimes it may not work, whatever the possibility we have chosen. But with practice, you are going to get it with in a quicker way. Practice is very important for discrete mathematics. Let's take the second example. If you take this second example, this is the LHS. This entire equation is LHS. This is equivalent to R. RHS is R. So this entire equation can be reduced to R. If you do that, we can show that LHS is equal to RHS. So take this LHS part and it is very, and this LHS is very big. Identify the possibilities in this. So what possibilities you need to identify? See, by looking at these two parts, Q conjunction R, disjunction P conjunction R. When you look at this, this for this we can apply distributive law. What distributive law says? See, take this only this part. We are assuming that this part is second part. We are taking only the second part. This can be applied distributive law. What's distributive law says? P conjunction, P disjunction Q conjunction R. This can be written as, see here, P disjunction R. P so, sorry, P conjunction R. What's there in the middle? Disjunction Q conjunction R. Q conjunction R. So, this is how our equation looks. See, R is common. R is common both sides. This is how you need to identify distributive law. That's why if, for remembrance purpose, we are explaining it, uh, which one is common, which one you have to take and uh, see here. Common is R. In this, we are having conjunction. In this conjunction, in between, we have disjunction. Opposite symbols you should have. Then only we can apply distributive law. So, this can be written as this form. So, our, this equation is written as, a, you can write this as a, in this form. Means Q disjunction P conjunction R. This is how we write this equation in the distributive law. So this is the second part. Similarly, you take this first part. What you are going to identify by taking this first part? See here, conjunction, conjunction, same symbols. You can go with associative law. Same symbols means you can shift these brackets to anywhere. The meaning is same. So now by applying, take the first part, this is the first part, negation P conjunction, negation Q conjunction R. If you take this brackets to the second uh, second half, this part, the second half uh, by applying associative law, negation P conjunction, negation Q. So brackets to these two parts, conjunction R. So why we have taken this negation P conjunction, negation Q by taking negation outside means but you can apply De Morgan's law by taking the negation outside conjunction is converted to disjunction negation of p disjunction q in conjunction r so this is the second this is the first part and from here we converted the second part 
after converting the after converting the first part and second part so the first part is converted using associate tool and distribute tool similarly second part is converted using a dist so first part is converted using associate tool and de morgan's law second part is converted using distribute tool by applying these two our final output which we got here is this is the output negation of p conjunction q disjunction t disjunction q conjunction r disjunction p conjunction p disjunction q conjunction r again this is in the form of distributive law you can apply distributive law here see take that this entire equation negation p disjunction q as x r as z p conjunction p disjunction q as y r as z x conjunction z y conjunction z in between disjunction if it is in this form we can apply distributive law because we are having common element what is the common element z here we are having conjunction conjunction in between disjunction then we can apply distributive law when when you apply this distributive law this can be converted as x conjunction uh, x disjunction y conjunction r conjunction z see this is x disjunction y conjunction r by applying distributive law so this is the output we got finally but finally we have to show it as r by looking at this see p conjunction q can be considered as x p conjunction p disjunction q is considered as x p disjunction q is considered as x negation x disjunction x from the previous examples equations negation p disjunction p you can say it as true always so this entire equation is converted this is always true true conjunction r can be written as r identity law which we discussed in our previous class it's not identity law some law t disjunction t conjunction r can be written as r so finally we got the output r this is how this is how we need to think about uh, the equivalence formulas which we discussed in our previous classes you try to apply different possibilities uh, if it is wrong I apply the different possibility next possibility like that you have to practice hope you understand these examples if you have any questions regarding the concept please post your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates thank you